So here is the hidden garden. I haven't come down here for a while for multiple reasons. That's one. Hi, it is Robbie from California, Southern California, and I can't believe August 1st. I have no complaints, but we've been doing things differently this year, so you're gonna see a lot of different stuff, and I might wind around the garden a little bit differently. Let's look at the chair garden first, because this has been my favorite this year. I put more time into this than anything else. Look at this. Everything is doing fantastic. I could have done something different here. I just took any tomato plant that was growing and I put it in that pot there. And well, it didn't fill in. And I don't even know what kind of tomato plant it is. But this one, actually, I don't think I knew what, what this one was. That's why you never know what, you know, is going to grow with a volunteer. This one's been packed. And you would think, wow, that's a lot of tomatoes. This is nothing. I came out last night and picked a couple dozen off of that for dinner to make salsa. And look how many there are today that are red. So this has been the most productive plant. I should do cuttings off of that. And that one, eh. But you know what? All in all, I am so pleased. So I've got my watermelon here taking off. I've got something being eaten. Look at this, probably a caterpillar on there. This came up. This is some sort of brassica on its own. I've got a little geranium I'm growing back there. Eggplant that should take off in the winter. Then I still have squash. This one might be fizzling out. No, I guess not. It's getting more fruit. And then this one, look at this. Gotta get that off. There, you're gonna see squash everywhere because there's so much even still in the house. I can't keep up with it and I need to freeze it is what I have to do. Then I've got that plant. I think that one is on its way out. Probably gonna trim that out and put something else in there. The tomatoes, look at the sun golds. You know what's wonderful? Some of these sun golds were made from cuttings that I did. I think this is the original one I bought. I could have it backwards. This is a beautiful sun gold. Look at all the tomatoes. These we just pick and eat. And then this one is just taken off and it's just kind of spreading along. Isn't that cool? Then I've got the brads. Now this is an original Brad's. It's not coming up as a volunteer or anything. Look at this. I bought these seeds like five years ago and I planted a couple seeds and they made it. And I don't know if Gary planted the tomatoes. I don't think he did, but I planted one Brad's in here. Isn't that gorgeous? So that's kind of in, intermingling with the, I've got black cherry in there too, with the sun golds. And then back there, I should walk on the other side, is black cherries that I actually bought. Then this squash didn't do good, so I just yanked it out and planted a new one. We'll see how that goes. I might redo that. And then here, I've got another squash, I think, another zucchini. Oh, well, wait a minute. Oh, and something nibbled on it. Oh, that's a perfect zucchini. I'll have to get that off. And then just cut off where it got nibbled on. And then this stuff on the bottom that's growing there, it's just things I'm, I'm kind of propagating. I've got a lot of different geraniums down there. I've got celery, garlic, chives growing. But over here is black cherry. I've never grown black cherry, and boy, are they good. This is them, they're ripe. So they get that color, and they are ripe. Isn't that beautiful? So I am so pleased with this. Very little squirrel damage, but I do have, um, I haven't seen the squirrels in here. I do have a lot of snails this year. I guess due to the rain and everything, boy, did we have an explosion of snails. And some of these little holes that develop on the squash, I was thinking, what is it? And then I get up early in the morning, and sure enough, I find a snail on there just chugging away and eating away. Oh, look at the rabbit. Let's take a peek. He's been hopping all over here. Oh, he's drinking out of the bowl. I leave the bowl there for the animals. I can't do much else. I've got raccoons. Look at that. He's drinking the fresh water I put in there. Yeah, I don't do a lot right now with the ponds because we've got a raccoon issue. And they come and take a bath. They swim in there. so. They destroyed some plants I had in there. So for now, I'm just going to kind of plant around the meadow. And the rabbit, he who is taking a good drink, he lives in the meadow there and he lives under my totes. Is that adorable? I know I'm getting sidetracked. You want to see the garden. And I, that's one thing nature always sidetracks me. Okay, let's get back. Let him do what he's doing. And then I've got dragonflies all, all over. Here I haven't done anything. I planted a full-size diamond watermelon and I took too long to put it out so I don't know if that's going to make it either look at this I have the fruit too the fig leaf gourd I don't know what to do with it I'm not crazy about the taste Gary's excited because they're so easy to grow and then when they die back in the winter you think they're gone they're not come spring they start taking off and growing everywhere there's a huge one back there I don't even think we can get back there to see 
but there's another one underneath. I've got an old stick here. Let's see if we can see it. Look at that. You see that? Even the animals won't eat it. Oh my gosh, there's two. I did not know there were two. Oh my gosh, so I don't know. See, and it's just gonna wind around. It's more like, can you get rid of it once you grow it? No, I'm gonna have to really, at some point, take the time and figure out what to do with it. And then my apple trees look beautiful this year. Am I ever gonna get any decent apples? Probably not, they were grown from seed. And then I've got the pomegranate coming up on the bottom here, I've got sage growing here, and the nectar marine tree. Oh, Gary wants to do grafting. He wants to graft onto an old peach tree he's got, but well, it's not old, a young peach tree that doesn't have good peaches, because this is the best nectarine he's ever eaten. Sweet light sugar, and as soon as you cut it in half, it falls away from the pit and so easy to eat. And then back here, we've got, we've got a lot of stuff going on. You're gonna see that. I've got my turmeric growing there. And this tree has just exploded with growth too. So I've got to trim a lot of this back and use it. Because remember, last year I grew all the turmeric just in the leaf matter that I collected off the ground. And it did great, now they're coming up. They're not getting a lot of sun. Oh, you know what? Let's walk over here. So I think they need more sun, but right now I'm gonna just not deal with it. Here is a pile of wood chips. This has been great. It's already breaking down. When you dig inside of it, it's already starting to break down. It smells unbelievable. And I can use this to put on top of plants. I don't know what Gary's gonna do with it, but that came from that tree there. And I've got a whole video on when they came and took it out. So what else? Let's see, let's just walk down here. Because there is a lot of different things going on. And some of it was planned and some of it was not. So here, oh, he's gone. The rabbit is gone. He's probably here somewhere. He's not afraid of me. He hops around all over. So I've got different flowers coming up in the meadow here. I think I've got, here's four o'clocks. I knew I had it. So I've got four o'clocks here. And then these that I threw are some sort of wildflowers. I think they're Chinese forget-me-nots. Got walking onions in there. This is a weed. Gary told me it's a weed, but it looks so pretty. I left it right now. I've got my moringa is flowering up there and they're growing in buckets. I got the black sugar cane. I've got different uh, geraniums in there. Just all kinds of stuff growing in there. Now here, I still am working. Look, I just planted another zucchini, which actually now could be uncovered. I'll just leave it like that. Oh, I see all those. Oh boy, these are tomato plants coming up. I could leave them for now. And if this grows really good, just yank them out. And if it doesn't grow really good, leave the tomatoes. Then I'll have tomatoes. I have another new plant there. Then I've got zucchini here. Ay, yeah, yeah. Let me see. Yeah, this is the issue. I can't even get to that tote. This geranium got so big. And then I've got walking onions. I don't think I have. Nope, didn't set that one up. See, I've got snails. So I've got snails in there. And then I didn't set this one up yet either. This one, I think I took the fruit off. This one kind of separated this plant into two. I took the fruit off. Did not get to that one yet either. I've been getting tons of fruit off of all these. And I pick them as I need them. Oh yeah, there's another one, a small one down there. Oh, I left these too long. You probably saw them on the last garden tour. See how they turn yellow? These are not gonna be good to eat. I'll probably take them off and compost them. It's zucchini. But if you leave them too long on the plant, they turn yellow and it's really pulling from the plant. It wants to grow more and the second I cut those off, it will take off and grow. I haven't gotten to this yet. What I have to do is collect all my walking onions or I'll lose them. Because as they're on the plant, they feed off the mother plant. But the moment the stem turns brown, all those babies will die if they don't hit the ground with water and get watered. And then they, won't, they just won't survive. They're not a storing onion. So they just don't have enough in their little bulbs to survive like that. So they should be planted straight away. And then here's another one. I think I got all the fruit off in that one. The tomato came up. This is a backwards planting unit. But the problem is the tomato came up and it's doing so well I left it. I shouldn't. This has to be taken out. Old Swiss chart. Uh, nothing in there. There's, oh, there's some Swiss chart growing back there. And a tomato plant came up. But actually, that's not a tomato plant. No, I had a potato in there. That's a potato plant. Here's another one. Oh, this is getting ready to harvest. I, should, I can even see potatoes down there. Should not see potatoes. 
Okay, so that's another potato plant growing in there. So it's going to have potatoes. And then there is the tomatoes I planted in a grocery bag. It can be done. If you're in an area that you are only going to have a few months of growing time, you can take a grocery bag, fill it up with whatever soil. I just used the soil that was here, and look how beautiful. Look at this. From a grocery bag, I'm getting tomatoes. Isn't that gorgeous? All through here. The plant keeps going. Remember, if you have cherry tomatoes and you trim them, you are actually trimming off your produce. So keep that in mind. So many people tell you, trim your tomato plants. You would trim them if you didn't want it big. If I wanted a small bushy plant, I could trim it and then just let it do some offshoots on the side. But anytime you trim a small type tomato plant like that, you are losing tomatoes. And you don't have to make them grow quicker by trimming them. It doesn't work that way. As the plant is growing, it will feed the tomatoes that are ready to grow. And you'll get tomatoes as it continues to grow. So you kind of have to grow your tomatoes the way you want. Now here, we've had a lot of, I'm gonna use the word construction going on. So things have been moved. These have to be moved back. So I'm right in the process of figuring out where I'm going to put everything. As you see, nothing stacked right now because things have been moved and, well, these got left here. So I, I was told they were all moved back and they're not. In here, I've got a celery. Look how beautiful that is. I want to leave that just the way it is. And then this is Malabar spinach. It's very succulent-like. It's got a very thick leaf, but it does have a slight spinach taste. But don't grow it if you're expecting spinach, because it's not spinach. That's just the name. And then I've got tomatoes. Now, this has been a good success. It may not look that good, but with the heat we've had, 100 degrees and just baking on this, this has been fabulous. Last night, I picked a cucumber on this one that was so good. It was so big. And this one's called Sweet Success. It curled, but boy, was it good. And I just, boy, I, I would like to keep some seeds from this. This I bought the plant. This one kind of had some problems, but it's coming back from the base. I'll probably trim this long piece off because this is going to stress out. And see how it's trying to grow from the base? It would be better to trim that back. But look at this. And then I've got another one here. Now, this, this is a pickling cucumber. And so it's still good. You eat it just like you're making a salad. I don't know what's growing here. It looks like a squash seed went to grow. Now here, I'm carrying around seeds now in my pocket. And since this didn't look good, I went ahead and put some pots in here with rocks. You know how I do that. And I pushed in three seeds and all three are growing. I pushed in one back there because this plant didn't make it. And it's growing just by pushing in seeds. And being in a pot and making sure there's no roly polies around because they don't crawl plastic too well. They can a little bit. It worked. And there's another one back there actually. So this is gonna, that's a squash. So that is gonna be really good. And I'm gonna get more cucumbers growing. Cucumbers aren't like zucchini. It, you can put a zucchini plant in a tote, a container in the ground, and it will go and go and go until the weather changes. And then at that point, it will die out or it can go, go all winter and then start again in the spring. Cucumbers don't last that long. Once they get a lot of fruit on them like those, they could fizzle out and say, I've done my job, I've produced seed, because I left them too long, and they'll die out. So you can continue during the warm weather, as long as they get about six hours of sunlight, you can continue to grow more plants. And that's what I'm doing now. I've got new plants started. This is that zucchini from, this is literally from last year. I'm protecting the trunk. It's coming out of the bucket. It's wound around and it's growing fruit. I was gonna pull the plant out. Look, here's another one. I was gonna pull the Black Beauty zucchini out but since I didn't get to it and I don't, you know, there would, I'd be pulling it out and I don't have another plant, I left it. And for now, I'm going to leave it. It looks so nice. If it didn't snap in half, it would be perfect. Okay, let me explain what's going on here. Actually, I'm going to do this differently. Let's go over to my mess over here. Gary found a bunch of chairs in the trash. So that's why we've got all those chairs there. We've got the butterflies. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, let's do this now while I'm talking to you. I really do not want to raise butterflies, but if I leave them on the plant, the Orioles come and they eat the caterpillars. So I'm not moving them, I just pick some of the plant, put it in here, and then they... So this is what goes on every single day. This one's ready. My granddaughter got to release one. Where'd it go? Oh yeah, you're ready. 
If you're not ready, you can stick around. Okay. Oh, there's another one down there. Okay, I'm not sure if that one's ready to go. We can just leave this open a little bit right now. Let's see if I can grab this one. Because I like getting them out during the day so they can settle on a tree. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, off he goes. Now I've noticed that some of the chrysalids, the cocoons, have been small and the butterflies are on the small side. And if, then if they're bigger, then you get the bigger butterflies. So I'm just going to leave this right now. But this isn't something I want to do. It takes a lot of time. I'm just not sure how to do this. The reason I'm going to do this is I'm not going to come back this way. You know what this is? This is recycling a cottage cheese container. Look how beautiful this is. Do you know what plant that is? This was a pile of papaya seeds. And these are 100 papaya plants. I don't know where I'm going to put it. So it's been in here. There's a container. See? There's holes. In, oh, they're growing the roots through. I can plant this whole pot and then let the strongest survive. So I'll see what I'm going to do. This is a real mess in here because, like I said, a lot of stuff has been going on. So things have been moved. Tools have been piled and moved around. I've got mustard growing in my pizza garden. Isn't that beautiful? I left it. It's the only mustard that's growing so gorgeous in with some tricolored sage down there. And then I've got the regular green sage. I've got basil growing. I've got oregano, more basil, rosemary, and then my thyme that needs a good trimming. So that's what's going on here. And then the peppers are starting to take off. My fig tree. We got, did a good trimming on it and it's already bushing out. And I've got this geranium I picked up walking down the street last year. Isn't that gorgeous? I've got another cutting from that already. And then here, I've got tomatoes growing. And then I've, this I didn't do anything because this is the milkweed coming up. And see, it's gone this seed. Look how, this is the seed. This is why you get milkweed all Look how it just it floats. See how it floats? It just floats away and you'll see it flying through the air and that's how milkweed spreads. See how it's floating? So I've got the milkweed in here, milkweed in there. It just kind of floated all over. And then I've got watermelon coming through. I did not plant this watermelon. This was seeds I was composting and it was in there and so it's growing. I'm going to let a couple fruit develop on there and then chop it back. I don't want it to try to grow any more than a couple. And let's see, this is my pepino. I'm trying to do cuttings off of this. This is already an old tired looking plant but it is still flowering so I'm trying to get new ones growing and then back here I've got my black cobra now this is a let me see if I can get you in here this is a pile of black cobra down here I really see how the bottom is can you see all the stems I really should get those out and separate them this is a sweet pepper this is the one that was growing in my pizza garden last year they all died this one I thought might have been dead but the stem had a little bit of greenness to it so I planted it in here for fun and it grew so I really should do cuttings off of this or at least keep some seeds from that. But this is a black cobra in there. That's red vein sorrel. Need to refresh some of these. And this one, something ate my new plant I put in there. Could have been a bird, could have been snails. I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'm going to get some more in here, something that didn't look good. So I yanked it out and I composted that zucchini plant. I think it was a yellow squash in there. Look how big the zinnias got. Can you see how big they are? Yes, they're happy. So I've got zinnias growing and then I've got more tomatoes growing in here. I've got eggplant in there. So that's good because here in the winter we grow a lot of eggplant. It does really good and it's going to get a lot of sun. Should do really good and I don't think there's any fruit left on here. I do believe I got it all off but there's new fruit starting. And this is another Black Beauty zucchini. My strawberries and I've got a tomato plant that's growing here. So that's what's going on here. Let's see. Eh, nothing else here. We won't come out this gate. We'll end in there and you'll see why. And then this is another geranium cutting in here. And that's that purple one that I found walking down the street. There was a piece kind of there. I literally a small piece. And look, it's turned into such a beautiful plant. Let's see what else is there. Oh, and then I've got the peppers down here. Yes, a grow bag. This was up against the wall and it got moved with everything else going on and I'm going to leave it here. In fact, I might spot some more buckets or grow bags through here. Peppers are one of the only things here in Southern California that do really, really good in grow bags because they don't mind getting dry. Tomatoes, you cannot dry the tomato plant out. If you dry out a tomato plant, it will look terrible. The leaves will curl and it may or may not come back if it gets too dry. 
peppers, on the other hand, when they get too dry, they think there's something's happening to them, so they grow more peppers. And this is a sweet pepper. Look at that. There are more in the center. Is that cool? Do you see that? I picked a bunch the other day. So I do have a couple more of those bags. I bought them on, I think I bought them from Walmart, and they were so cheap, they were like two bucks a bag. I think they were two or three dollars a bag. And I've got one there, I didn't use them, and then one for my strawberries over there on the purple chair because I didn't care about the strawberries. I threw them in there. I had a squash in there, but it died. I tried different things, and I just don't do well with grow bags here because we're so dry and hot normally. But peppers, yeah, I might spot another one there and another one there because the rabbits aren't touching the peppers. So that's a good thing. So let's keep walking, and let's let the butterfly sit there and decide what he's going to do. That's a good place for him. Now, what is going on here is we're fixing things that needed to be fixed for many, many years, probably close to 10 years. So I moved a lot of these plants that I was starting and buying, which was over here on this thing. And this was falling apart, so we just finished this. So Gary and I now have here that we can do something with. This is, this is the backside here, and there's really no sun. So it's a nice place to sit. I'll tell you, I've never sat here. I never painted here because I want it to be light. It's very dark, so we've left it. Years ago, somebody sandblasted this house, and they had places where it was painted and places it wasn't. So what I did was I painted this whole house green. And the reason I painted it green, <sighs> let's not really get into it, but it was all sandblasted and gray. I'll get into it for a second. And my best friend passed away. And I was really having a hard time. We were friends for like 45 years. She was a big part of my life. And I just was kind of lost. I came out here with the paint I had bought. I was at Home Depot and they had those big five gallon buckets. There were two of them for like $30 each. And I bought them both. And I came out here with a two inch brush. This is not a joke. And I hand painted the entire house on this side. I started down there and I worked my way across. And when I couldn't reach the eaves, I taped my brush to a long pole and I just sat out here. And every day I came out here for about an hour and I would paint. Even if it was only one foot of space, I would paint. Was, I guess you could call it my therapy. And I painted and the neighbors would walk by and they'd go, oh, how are you doing today? I'd just say fine and I would keep going. And until I got to the end, and then all of a sudden I put a high on there. I painted on the wall, high. Didn't get to quite the top on that. I think a little bit, half of it I got through. Take, I went ahead and painted high on there and with a smiley face, and then some of my neighbors came by. She's feeling better. So I got to this part, and then Gary went ahead and finished the back part and finished the front. I had done a little bit in the front. So he finished up what I didn't do, but that's how the house ended up green. Found the green, and I thought, you know what? Better than having a sandblasted look. And the, I haven't done in the bird garden because I don't know what color I want to do. I don't want it real dark. So that's why I haven't done anything there. It's a slow process. So anyways, getting back to this. So we finished this because it was falling apart and it looked terrible. Now I'll have to paint the inside and patch up everything here. And now it looks nice and clean. And then so everything's been moved out. There was an old table there, an old chair. So a lot of my plants have been moved here, so I'm gonna kinda decide what I'm gonna do. Everything else, really, there's nothing new. There's a black cherry tomato here I've gotta get planted. Oh, here's another pepper plant. I think this is a Fresno. Yep, it is a Fresno. See how I can put this? You can get these skewers at the dollar store, like a 50 of them for a dollar, and then you can tape your stakes in there and just put it on like that. So this way I remember what it is. So I've got a Fresno in there. It's not doing as good as the other one. Maybe I'll move that into the rainbow garden. And this is my black cobra. This thing now is what, three years old? It's on its third year. Isn't that gorgeous? There were three of them in one pot. I got it at the 99 cent store and I gave one to my son-in-law and he had it for a couple years. Gary's got his still. And then I kept that one. That was the biggest. The smallest one went to Gary and the medium one went to my son-in-law. So it's, it was a good buy and they're still growing. So they look green when they, I think when they, come out. No, I guess this one's black. Sometimes they're green. They kind of look green. Then they turn black. 
and then when they're ripe they're red and boy are they hot but boy they are nice and you can freeze them really good just like you do tomatoes let's do a quick walkthrough because i'm quite kind of anxious to get you to see see what's going on here probably nothing oh yeah i haven't even looked in here oh that's a beautiful clean soft skin zucchini i've got to get that in today so anyways that's what's going on here and nothing new so what you would have seen before you can wave <laughs> it's my granddaughter so anyways she's throwing out the trash so everything is pretty much the same except for stuff that got dragged out from that gary calls it a front porch i call it the back porch everybody's got their own thing now here i'm going to let me lean back out of the sun because we're going to be really hot my plans are all these upside down planters that i don't even think they sell anymore nor are they worth it i'm going to grow lettuce in them maybe parsley i'm not going to grow zucchini which i'm growing in there now and there's parsley which is okay there's oregano i'll leave my oregano but i want to have lettuce because it's so easy to cover in these and it's up again from the rabbits and everything and i can control it it gets some sun but not a ton so it should work really good and if i can get my act together which i haven't done I should start that right now. It's summer, it's hot, but you know what? I grew lettuce all last summer and I'm still growing lettuce now. And I wanna make sure I have lettuce because that, you know, you want it in the summer. So that's something I need to do. But like I said, we've been doing 101 other things. Here I moved everything over and it was okay until something came in here. I don't know if the ravens are coming in here and getting my tomatoes, but something is. See, oh no, actually that's not tomatoes. I know they got, it. oh, it just fell in front. You know what this is? Rainy orange, carrot wood. And then all the little carrot wood trees grow. So something got in here and ate one of my tomatoes yesterday. But actually there's still a lot of tomatoes. I can just put tool over that. Get some irrigation tubing. I wanna get the three of them done, string some irrigation tubing over it, and then just put some tool on there and I'll have all the tomatoes I want. That celery, I'll probably yank it out because this is literally a weed. So all these are, seeds are gonna fall. They're super fine. Yes, I know, celery seeds are expensive. It is, I should collect the celery seeds. So that's what's gonna go on there. I'm gonna keep the avocado tree, why? Less work, I don't have to think about what I'm gonna put in there and I can think, look, I'm successful, I grew an avocado tree. That's so funny. But anyways, I'm gonna leave the avocado tree for right now probably yank this out oh here is my this came from the deck this is my brandy wine and it's still growing tomatoes but we have gotten so many on there i think we've taken most of them off i should trim this or at least string it up better but we had tomatoes oh constantly i've gotten about six big tomatoes off of it and it's nothing's nicer than coming out in the evening when i'm going to make something for dinner and just grabbing a tomato okay let's go into the front yard so we're not gonna waste our time in the front yard because nothing's new. I just did a separate video on this so you can go watch that and see why I'm not happy with it. So in a separate video, I will explain why. Uh, Anissa, yeah. show me where he is. So my granddaughter's got a new pet. Where is he? He's over on this side, just chilling behind the, the plants and everything. I think he's trying to find a cool spot before it gets too hot. So you wanna tell what happened the other day? Um, I was coming in through the back door and I was on the phone with my boyfriend and I looked down and there's a snake just sitting there and I was like, oh, there's a gopher snake. And my boyfriend was like, are you scared of snakes? And I was like, no, I'm just going to step over him. And when I opened the door, he slid in that house so fast, beating me into the house. And I was like, excuse you. <laughs> and he hid behind a bunch of stuff in the house. So I had to call my grandmother and Gary to come over and try to find him. Oh. Oh, I scared him. Oh, I scared him. I wanted to see him. Okay, I'll have to. Yeah, if you come around this way, you can see him. Okay, He's let's go. There's nothing new here. I'm going to work on this table. We'll see it when it's done. Uh, nothing new here. And we'll talk about the project because we've been doing, like I said, well, let's go see. Her. Yeah, so she walked in the house. It followed her in. And then she called no, Gary. Oh, it beat you in. She opened the door and it's, it got past yeah, her. I'm taking over your room. Isn't that funny? It wanted in the house. It was like 100 degrees that day. Yeah, it was hot. He's just behind the leaves right there. Oh, there he is. I know he's the same one too. He's small like the one from the other day as well. No, you cannot see him. I got some pictures of him if you want them. 
Yeah, maybe so. Let's see. Oh, where is he? He's not this way. He's tangled. He's like bundled up in himself right here. I don't think I can get my camera in there. This is just a gopher snake. Oh, yeah. There he is. Just... Oh, look at that. Hi, buddy. As we figure out, oh, it's actually something else. Oh, there he is. He looks kind of big. No, I don't know. No, this is the same size one from last time. He's moving day. around. All right, we'll let him go. I'll let you go do your things. Yeah. Thanks for the story. Of course. Thank you. So that's what's going on here. I mean, they want to be cool too, and it's really hot. So he beat her in the house, and then he was sitting there. So Gary came, and he went behind the cabinet or something. Gary just picked him up and found a nice, safe place for him. Apparently, they're looking for cool places. So that's what's going on, because they're struggling with all this heat too. This is the turmeric and ginger table. Now, last year I grew turmeric, I believe, in there. This time a tomato plant came up and I'm going to just leave the tomato plant. It's doing wonderful. I have no idea what kind of tomato it is, but look how good it is. And then I've also got back here a tomatillo. Is that cool? So I've got one tomatillo and one tomato growing in there and the tomatillo is growing in the orange bucket, which is a two system. I can lift the bucket up put more compost in there, water it, it feeds the plant and it feeds the tomatillo. They're really taking off. Now these, I thought there was a couple of them that weren't, but I see that they are coming up. They're just starting, there's another one. They've been really slow this year. No, that's nothing. So I'll have to look through and see, there's one back there. So this is my ginger, which is coming up slower than my turmeric. So the turmeric is coming up faster and that is an interesting thing to see this year. So I know that it's growing, but boy, is it slow, the ginger, compared to the turmeric. So all of it's doing great. I'm really pleased. This is the blue or the black turmeric. Got a little bit of chamomile growing in here with it. And then I've got my stevia back here. I've got three containers of stevia. So I can come out here when I want to make, let's say, mint tea, grab some stevia leaves. And then I just blend it up and strain it and drink it cold or hot with water, of course. All right, now let's go see what's exciting. Oh, you know what? You want to go down and see the secret garden. Nothing's new, but let's go down and see what's going on in here, or I should say the hidden garden. So here is the hidden garden. I haven't come down here for a while for multiple reasons. That's one. Look at this. This has got a crack, and look at this. A tomato plant is coming through the crack. Let's look down here for a minute. Now, as you can see, this is falling away. And though I still can walk back here, I just, I've had so much other stuff going on that I haven't done anything back here. We can take a peek, but this is what I don't like. This is falling away. And Gary had built this up a while back. So now he's going to try something else. We got something that a company makes that you put on hillsides. It's supposed to be incredibly easy. So this is gonna be a project he's gonna do, and this will build up this entire area and he'll be able to plant. Now he planted all this. When we first got this property, this hillside was empty, had some jade plant in there. He went through and dotted the entire hillside with elephant food. And when you have a plant that's growing on hillsides, think of after a fire. Plants, their roots, hold the soil in place. And this is why that you can have rain and different things and nothing floods. But the second you have a fire and everything's wiped out, you have major flooding. You would have flooding down here. But look at this. Isn't this amazing? So he planted this up. Now, I'm not sure what his plans are here. We've got a honeysuckle down there that the hummingbirds feed on when it has the orange flowers on it. Right now, all it does, he loaded this with wood chips, is it just breaks away. So he's going to do something. We'll see what he's going to do as the year goes on. And then I'll be able to walk here. Let's see, I want to hold on as I walk through here because it is really just a very narrow pathway. And I don't want it to break as I'm back here. Nothing's been done here. We still have the, oh, wow. This dragon fruit really is taken off in the pot. This is really cool. That's the red one. I don't think we'll get fruit this year. It's a small plant, but we'll see. But look at my dragon fruit. Oh, look at all the fruit starting. See, that's going to be a fruit, a flower. And if you look up, there's, there's two there. 
There's two, there are three there actually. They're all full here. So we're starting our fruit. We had like, I think I had like 50 of them, if not more last year. I have to be careful because the whole hillside's coming down here. And then here, look at them. See, I've got to clear the backside now here. There's something going on in my bird garden. We'll see that when we go in there. But I need to be able to get to these and water them easy, even though he does have a hose here and he does come back here. So we'll see how this goes. But this is the fig tree that is the strawberry fig, and I've got to get cuttings off of that. I took some cuttings and I did something stupid and it would never grow the way I did it. And I know exactly how to do it. So I'm gonna get some more cuttings off the fig tree and then get that all set up. Isn't that beautiful? This fig tree, though it's a really good fig, looks a little sad, I think it needs water. It is not as good as that one and the birds love that one too. All right, let's go back. See, that's the back side of my bird garden. And you'll see here as we walk through this is where the hillside keeps coming down. So he's going to change this. Hopefully it works. We haven't done that. Look at this. I got to trim this back. This doesn't need a hangover like this. Why isn't that beautiful? Some my lemon verbena that's coming through. More purple tree collared. And then this is my original purple tree collared I bought on eBay many years ago. And even though it looks sad right now with the heat, once I get all the seeds, taken off just chop them up and compost them because I like to grow from cuttings not seed this will be fabulous and just trim it back and this is really interesting okay let's go back up now let's go into the bird garden this is a disaster because things have moved look at my junk pile back here it does look like a junk pile this is something I have to do very quickly or I will lose all these onions. I've got hundreds of walks. See this onion? If I leave this one, they'll simply dry out and die. They have to feed and get water from the mother plant. It's not a regular onion bulb where it can last that long. So I have to make sure to come back. I might just stick it in my pocket and stick that in water. But what I have to do is go through and collect them all. I can put him in some soil, some damp soil, and let him sit there until I figure out what I'm going to do. So where did all this come from? It came from here. Wait a minute. What's this pole? Up, 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 up. I am excited. This is something I've wanted. We had some work done here. Gary was working, you saw. We had somebody else here that was doing some work I found that was really good. And I said to the guy, I walked him out here, I said, I want, I call it an awning, he calls it a veranda, he calls it a, a porch, I don't know what to call it, but as you know, the bird garden, I can never come out here and do a video or anything because this is south facing, so south facing that I have sun, and right now the, the sun is behind the pine trees, so we're okay, in here, and all I can do is zigzag that for the birds so no hawks come in and give them a little bit of shade that way. But otherwise, boy, as we go into fall, the sun drops and it's just beating in here because fall in Southern California is hot. Sometimes it is hotter than the start of summer. I mean, really hot. We could be 100 plus degrees in September, even into the beginning of October. So I wanted something here. And the only awning I had was that little tiny thing. And I don't know what that's supposed to do. So I said, build me something that's cheap, but that's going to look good. And I think this looks fabulous. So I went ahead and had him do light in between, just to give it a little more light. It needs a little bit more painting. Gary's going to do some more stuff. And then just wood. And then that's what it is. It's all done. So it goes from here, and then you can see all the way across here. And I'm just figuring out what to put here. My granddaughter said, put a table and chair out here. I gave her a table. I have a different table I want to get. She said, so I can come out here and have breakfast. So isn't that cool? I'm really excited because now if I want, I could even go live and be able to sit out here and not have the sun beating in my eyes and my head. And it, like I said, it's bright. The other side of the house, you don't get any sun. It's all shade, but this side is all sun. So this is really beautiful. I am so excited. Look at my zinnias. Are they beautiful grown from seed in this container? Just throw some seeds out here and look, 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 look. Is that gorgeous? got a cabbage butterfly right there. See? I think this is 
gorgeous. I want to get more flowers in here. I am just so happy right now. This has been just something I've wanted. I couldn't figure out how to do it. And we walked it and he said, I'll tell you, I know what you want. And he built this so nice. It costs a little bit, but it was it's well worth it. We don't vacation or go anywhere. So we use that instead of going on vacation. I don't know where I would vacation. You know, our vacation used to be, we used to run to Vegas for the evening just to eat dinner, drive around and come home. So we haven't done that in, geez. I'm gonna say we haven't done that in about 15, 20 years. So isn't that cool? I'm excited. We'll see what I do with it. I wanna grow some lettuce back here. My mint seems quite happy. I left that, so we didn't move that out. And then they pulled everything else out. So now I'm kinda of starting from scratch in here, but that's okay, little by little. And then, oh, and then the trough. Okay, so I've got walking onions here. I've got the garden hose, it works perfect. So when I overwater this, the water comes out through the garden hose on the bottom. You can see the whole video on that. Oh boy, tons of tomatoes coming through here. Those are all tomatoes. Maybe I should let some of them grow. The tomato plants are doing really good. I love the irrigation tubing because what I do is I double string simple yarn. So I've got yarn here, just double string it around the tomatoes. Then I have another double string and I can string it through as it grows. Here's another big one. So I'll double string again here. So we just wind it around and then I can hold the tomatoes up and they'll just go up, up, up straight. I'm not doing any pruning on them and it's gonna grow so good. You can see how nice it's growing. Each one is in a pot that's got great big holes. So they have independent watering. See how that is down there? but they can still send their roots into this big trough. And then I've got some walking onions. I, as I pick up the little dried ones, I was sticking them in. And then, like I said, we can't really get back here, but here's Tommy the tomato. I keep pushing him through here right now. So he'll go up, up, up. And that is doing really good. I'm really pleased. It looks like a, it's a little light. I think I should get some compost tea in there for it, but isn't that nice? I've got a pot in there. I could just throw some leaves in there. But that is Tommy the tomato, and then I've got lemon verbena back there, and then look at my dragon fruit. I need to trim the dragon fruit. It is all over the place and it bites. They've got thorns, and boy, do they get you. So I need to trim that back. But it is, see, it's coming at me. Can you see how it's coming at me? So once I get in here, I'm gonna trim a lot of my tree collards, because they're kind of old and they're dealing with the heat. Trim them, and this is the easiest thing for me to do. Just chop off big pieces like this, and stick them in the ground. And then whatever ones grow, grow. And let me tell you something, they do grow. I've done that. Just stick it straight in the ground, forget about it. Preferably put it in a pot with an open bottom. And then it can get the water, like I'm doing here, straight to the base of the plant. And that way you don't have to even go fancy in the propagating and whatever grows, grows. And I'll tell you, usually 90% of them grow. So I wanna do that more in the back. So I'll have like a big hedge of tree colored and I can always replace them out. Then I've got lemon verbena there. I have to remember, we gotta walk this way now. And this is just so pretty. I wanna get some more water features in here. And that is my goal here. And then I can also do my bird photography now, see? With this shade, I can use both sliding glass doors and I can sit inside and I can watch the birds come. Here, I've got a whole video. I know it's two hours long. Of the birds that I have photographed, most of them came from here. There were 50 species at that time. We probably now have 60 that come through this one area. It's amazing how many birds have been attracted to this place. They hear the water. Hear the water? When they hear water, they come. When they see food, they come. So you think you got a bunch of seed eaters. No, because then the insect eaters come through and they see the seed eaters here, which are all hiding now because it's getting really hot. It's kind of a muggy day today, but it's still hot. They feed really early, really early in the morning. But when the insect eaters see the seed eaters, they know it's safe. So they'll come in, the Orioles and different birds, the bush tits, the wrens, they'll come and take a bath in here. Then they hang around in here eating insects. That's why you don't see a lot of insects. We don't spray at all. No insect spray. Nothing. That's why I was losing all the monarchs because they'll go through my rainbow garden and then they'll remove the caterpillars off of there, especially when they're tiny. And that's why I was kind of throwing some tool on top and letting them do their thing that way. But I've got to get rid of that tote. I open that up so I can 
do some photography straight through on that ball. I'm making more cement balls now. I want to set them through here. I want the feeders elevated a little bit along with, there's water features in the big bush there. I've got hummingbird lunch growing in here, which the hummingbirds love, which is this. Then I've got, this is an emu plant. I've got sage there. It's, it's called uh, emu bush. This one grows a yellow flower. And this one, this one grows tall. This is also an emu bush, but see, the hummingbirds like that. This grows a pink flower. So the tall one grows a pink flower and the bushy one grows a yellow flower. And then I've got different, this is a sage. And then I've got columbine down there. And then I've got another sage. I'm sorry, this is a salvia. They're all, a lot of them are in the same family. And that's a sage down there. So salvias are wonderful. You asked me what to you know, give for hummingbirds. Almost any salvia will, will just be great. This is the type of plant that they can stick their little beak in and just go deep inside to get the pollen and the nectar from them. But the hummingbird lunch, you look at those flowers and you think, they're so tiny. Oh no, they feed on this all day. When I sit in there and have coffee quietly, even if I sit out here, they come and they feed looking for nectar and looking for pollen. And then of course, they also look for little insects, the hummingbirds. But this has worked out good, but that purple tree color fell down. And the reason I'm leaving it is because all those are beautiful plants. So I wanna get this all off before they turn too much. If they turn too much, I'll lose them. I've got roses back here. I've got another papaya back there growing. There's a papaya plant I planted last year, made it. Roses that I did cuttings from, see? These are all cuttings. So I've got more roses, different flowers. And look at this. This is the polka dot plant I bought last year. And they sold it for like $3.88 a tray. So if you went inside Lowe's, they had them for like seven, eight dollars a single small plant. I go outside and they had a, a little flat of them for $3.88. So I've got those spotted. So I look at the different spotted uh, polka dot plants there. Here's more polka dot plants. They don't like a ton of sun, so this is gonna work out. And even having the awning here, I can get more plants through here now and flowers that like sun, but not too much sun. So that's what's been going on. And that's why I wanted to end it here because I'm really excited. We also did uh, the deck. That's why the deck has been totally redone because that's something that needed to be done for close to 20 years. Oh, look at the little, okay, those are goldfinches. I thought there was a bush tip back there too. We've got hundreds of goldfinches. That's another story. I should do a whole video on that. 30 years ago, when Gary came out here, he was so excited to see a little goldfinch because we really rarely had them. Now we've got probably almost as many goldfinches as we have hummingbirds. Why? Because the food source. They love little seeds. So that's why I leave a lot of this and these are pretty much eaten. They love the seed heads. They don't like going into the feeders. I know a lot of you on the East Coast tell me your goldfinches eat sunflowers. Ours do not. They're very tiny, softer beaks, and they don't know what it is, and they don't even attempt to eat any of the sunflower seed. But they do go through here, and they just take all the seeds off of all the plants. On top of that, I found their favorite food has been lettuce. I grow romaine lettuce. I let it go to seed, and you will see mom bring, and dad, bring the babies and teach them how to eat the lettuce heads. Just adorable, isn't that cool? I am so excited with that. And this is why I haven't painted this side of the house. The guy said to us, you know, you didn't paint your stucco. Gary put the stucco up. I said, yeah, because I still haven't decided on a color. If I went dark green, it would make it real dark. And I don't really want it real dark. I like the lightness and the plants showing. If it's green and I plant plants here, you're not gonna see the plants. So I'm probably going to go more of a gray or a beige when I'm ready. I'm still not ready. And we've got the lights up there for the hummingbirds that, you know, a lot of hummingbirds did not nest here this year. Behavior on the hummingbirds were very different. I should do a video on that. Oh, look at, there is the K-cup in a bowl hanging. And yes, the birds do come to that. So this has just been fun. I want to get a lot of water features here, especially in this area and there, so I could do my photography. Here, I'm going to gut all this. When, I don't know, little by little, gut a lot of it, let a lot of the plants retake off, you know, especially when we get through the heat. And then I wanna get this full of plants. There is a water feature back there I got buried. Pull that one out, cause that's a beautiful one. This one we found in the trash a while back. And then this one I bought at a thrift store. I've gotta get the panel back up, it fell. 
and move uh, some of these around where I can see them now and then have the plants all through the back there. And then I've got some four o'clocks back here. Like I said, it has been a real mess. Oh, and then we got this. Almost forgot. Well, we had the awning, remember? This gazebo was down there where the new one is. So Gary said, where do you want to put it? On the deck? I said, no, I've got a small one on the deck. Let's move it here. So we can put it here. Gary made this sink for me, something he found. I think you all saw. He found it in the trash. Somebody was getting rid of it. And he just took some two by fours and sat the sink in there, put the pipe that will go back there and feed and water the citrus trees as I work, work here. They look really happy. And then I can pot up some stuff and work out of the sun and be sheltered. And then my papayas are looking like they're gonna make a comeback. And I wanna get something in here to cover the roots and give them really a lot of water. I don't wanna to touch the tote because they broke through, but I wanna see if these papayas will really make a good comeback. They really suffered from our freezing cold winter. But that one, these are doing really good. That one's struggling, but yet it's still getting a lot, nice green top to it. So I think it's doing really good. So now I've got an area, like a little potting shed that I can work on. And do you know what this is? This is my culantro, not regular cilantro. This is culantro. Technically, I should cut this off because this one is going to seed, but I'm going to leave it. I would like to collect my own seeds. And then I've got another seedling coming up here. And then I've got this one. You know, it's a little sunny. I don't know if they like that much sun. So I'm going to move it. And I've got to find the right place for it. This one's doing really good. Let's move this one too right now because I can feel it's really hot now. We're probably close to 90 right now. And I am just excited. So don't you dare take my seedling. <laughs> the butterfly, go away, go away. I don't know if they would even land on this to leave any eggs on this. But there it is. There's my cilantro. So I have a bag of potting soil if I want to pot up some little tiny seedlings. I can also reach down into the soil and grab some soil and mix it with the potting soil. This is purple tree colored. I've got to trim it gently back, get rid of all the seed heads, clean it up. This cage, if you know, some of you have told me you have cats. This is something, I'll do a full video on it. Get yourself a cage. This is a crate somebody gave me and the cats cannot get in there. Although this one they can because the door is open and it's just sitting on a pedestal. But the birds can go in and out of that, the cats can't. And by the time the birds leave, the cat wouldn't even know where the birds went. So that works out really good. This is actually put here so no hawks can get the birds and they can feed in there and be protected from the hawks. So that's it. So we did something a little different today. I just saw a woodpecker go up there. And I wanted you to see that we are doing stuff and that's why I haven't been doing gardening as much as I should. We're actually doing stuff around here that we should have done 20 years ago and now we're doing it now. And then here, well, this is just stuff I'm gonna redo. This is that soil that's bad. Remember I told you I had bad soil. I piled it in here and I'm just waiting to see if anything's gonna grow. So far, no weeds. I stuck a piece of geranium in there and it's not looking happy, which means the soil's no good. So I'm gonna wait and see when I can use it. That's a celery that came up. I'm gonna pull that out and I'm letting my chocolate mint grow around. And this needs to be really trimmed. I need to do this because it's really having a hard time. A lot of the plants that I had for years did not do well with the freeze. I did trim my moringa back and it's coming back from the bottom. See, I cut it all the way back. So we've had a, you know, a bad winter and now we're having a hot, hot summer. So we'll see how it goes. No reason to go in there, but we've got plants growing. Let's see, real quick. I don't know what he's got. I don't even know what he's got. Oh no. Oh no, that is my turmeric. And I don't know where I'm gonna put that many. So we'll have to see, and then I've got more things up there. So anyways, that's what's going on around here. I'm really, really pleased with my papaya and I'm pleased with the stuff we've been doing. Now, we just have to cool off a little bit because I'll tell you to be honest, I do not work out in this heat. I'm gonna sit for a second. It's just, it's brutal. The older I get, I can feel the heat. I used to be able to paint, and I mean like I painted my house, not this house, a different house years ago. It was 106, and I was painting the house like I did this one. No, I wasn't upset or anything. A neighbor came up to me and said, do you know it's 106 today? And I said, oh yes, and I'm loving it. Out in the sun, painting my house by hand. But now I do get hot, and I don't want to make myself sick. 
because even though I may feel okay, I know it's not good. So I'm just trying to do indoor stuff during the day. And then I come out here and I work in the evening or early morning. So anyways, that's it. It doesn't look that good, but let me tell you, once our weather cools in the fall, probably middle of fall, it'll make a nice comeback. The birds are starting to come in now for their seeds and stuff. I hope you can see them. They're coming in all over. And they're also coming in to eat the seeds off the top of the plants. And they're coming in to take a bath. So I hope you enjoyed this walk around here. And, well, not sure what else to say. I'm just very pleased with this summer. It's been a tough year for other things, you know. You know, I miss kitties so much. And that really does bring me down a lot. And I know a lot of you do. But, you know, what can we do? Life goes on and that's what we're doing. So we kept ourselves busy doing things that needed to be done. Gary said it's about time we do a lot for other people. And he said, and now we really have to do something for ourselves. So he put his foot down, but I think he's right. So with that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Have a great day and stay cool if you're in a hot area. Bye-bye.